I'm Phoenix 11's Ken Lynch. We're here at Central and Townley in Sunny Slope, where one of the most significant events in the history of Sunny Slope is taking place today. It's a groundbreak, this dirt lot behind you here. It's going to be eventually, in fact, in the very near future, a development featuring an Abco supermarket as the anchor tenant, plus a video store and other things. The kind of retail development that Sunny Slope has been anxious for for a long, long time. On this stage right over here, as they get set up this afternoon, we're going to hear speakers, including council members Phil Gordon and Cody Williams, and also representatives from ABCO and the development company. It's going to be a big event, and we're going to have a lot of fun. In just a few minutes, this place is going to be filled with people, and the groundbreaking is going to take place. One of the guys we want to talk to is Mike Ritchie. Mike's right over here. Mike is the project manager for the company that's going to be building the whole project. And Mike, hi. Hello, Ken. This is a pretty big day for your organization. Uh, we're very excited about today. Yes, sir. Let's make sure we get the name of the, of the development company correct and exactly what you're going to be doing here. Well, the, the development company is actually Sunny Slope Village Center, LLC, but A and C Properties is the managing member of that LLC. And you're the project manager, right? That's correct. Now, what does that mean? What, what, what are your responsibilities going to be as this development gets going? Well, I've been the guy who's basically been in charge of getting everything ready to go up until this point and will be uh, coordinating the construction efforts uh, which we hope to actually begin next week. Wow, that's pretty fast. Now is a project manager also part of the uh, team that tries to attract uh, tenants to a development like this? That's correct. And, and you're, you've been dealing with who? Who else is going to be here? Uh, well, we have uh, Fleming Foods uh, operating as uh, Abco Desert Market and uh, Office Depot, uh, Greenbacks and the Hollywood Video. Boy, that's great. And for the folks of this area, uh, I assume you've had a lot of support here for uh, getting a project like this off the ground. It's been a long time. People have been waiting for something like this for a long time in this area. Uh, Ken, I was introduced to this project almost three years ago, well, three years in December. And the community support has just been terrific. Uh, without the community, uh, Sunny Slope Village Revitalization and the City of Phoenix, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. Well, let me ask you, from a business point of view, um, how is it that this looked like a good idea, and why was it not, say, for so long? The, the big problem with redevelopment projects is that you need to have basically everything done before you can begin. And a couple of the projects that were scheduled here before uh, were residential, and one was office. And those aren't the type of projects that lend themselves to getting the end users up front. Obviously, residential it's impossible to do it has to be there before you can right. have somebody move in uh, retail has an opportunity uh, because these are tenants that have other locations that they can plan ahead and therefore we have the opportunity of basically putting the basis together leasing enough space so that we can then go out and get the construction loan and basically finish the project before we even start construction Okay, gotcha. Well, Mike, congratulations, and uh, thanks to all the, from all the people of Phoenix for what you guys are going to be doing here. I know it's a real exciting development. Thank you, Ken. We're very excited about getting underway here. Things are starting to fill up a little bit here. People are showing up. We've got uh, small shovels. About 300 of these are being uh, handed out as kind of tickets to today's groundbreaking. One of the people who's just thrilled about today's event is Lee Farr, a longtime resident of the Sunny Slope area. Lee, how long have you lived here? Oh, well, I came here when I was... Uh, when I was went to work for Phoenix Union High School system and I was in my mid-30s then and my next birthday I'll be 80 years old. So you've been here a few years. Yeah. Now has the neighborhood changed much uh, in, in the uh, oh, gee, yes. 40 or so years you've been here? Oh yes. How would you describe those changes? Well when I first came here uh, Central uh, Avenue was almost like a dirt road. They didn't even have sidewalks. And this place out here was country. Uh, you could drive out here on the dirt roads and see people raising their gardens. Well, what, what would you like the people in the rest of the city, it's such a big city now, what would you like people in the rest of the city to think or know about the Sunny Slope area? I live here. <laughs> and I'm, I could choose to live anywhere. Lee, thanks a lot. And, and you know a lot of people put up with me. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're a self-described mean old lady, isn't that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, can't you tell? We better be signing off before she starts showing a little bit of that mean. <laughs>
What you're looking at now is the old People's Pharmacy. And from what we understand, that's been actually donated by the developer to the Sunny Slope Historical Society. And we're here with the president of the society, Connie Kramer. And Connie, I understand you're going to move that building? Yes, we are. Uh, probably next weekend, maybe on uh, the morning of November the 8th, hopefully. It's been quite a project, but we have are very pleased that these buildings have been donated. It's not only this building, the People's Drug Store, but another small house that was built in 1945. We plan to move those buildings to the address of 737 East Hatcher Road. Um, it will make, uh, we're going to be creating a Sunny Slope Museum and Cultural Center. At that address? Uh, at that address, yes. Uh -huh. That land was donated to us also by the People's Drug Store. Oh, that wasn't right. No, by, by uh, uh, Meluzo okay. uh, family. Yes. Now, People's Drug Store, you're saying People's, that's a, that's a person's name. That right? He just called it People's Drug Store. Bob Rice was uh -huh. the owner and operator of the drug store. Now, you happen to know a lot about the history of Sunny Slope being president of the Historical Society. Uh, for example, one of the things we were talking about that I'll bet not too many people know is the origin or the derivation of the famous Sunny Slope S. Everybody in the valley has seen that at one time or another. What can you tell us about that? The S was created by the first graduate, first class at Sunny Slope High School. Probably the first class was 1953. Uh, probably was done in about 1954, the S. It's maintained and whitewashed by the freshman class. Each year they do this just before homecoming for their homecoming. Oh, event. I didn't know that. You can see that S in many spots all over the valley. You sure can. Yes, you yeah. Can. Now, of course, a lot of people know that Sunny Slope uh, in its earlier days was considered a haven for people with tubercular and other respiratory problems. Right. Is that true? I mean, that's what I've heard that all my right. life. Yeah. That's right. It was. Uh, it was drier climate for people with TB or respiratory problems being north of the Arizona Canal. It, it was just a much drier climate. Mm. And uh, that's really how it just started being settled by people coming out here. Okay. In 1920, the mid-20s, why uh, the Desert Mission was established to give medicine and food and help these people that were here. Hmm, I see. Now, today's event actually is probably going to have a place in Sunny Slope history, isn't it? Right. This. Um, development is going to be is being built on the first subdivision that's laid out in 1911 oh wait a minute William I, I didn't know that say that again this this is this is being built on the site of the first subdivision in right. sunny slope uh -huh. from 1911 it was plotted in 1911 yes wow, so it this... continues on down to alice but uh, it is part of the uh, site of the first subdivision Wow, so slope. another piece of history being made on a historic piece of Sunny Slope property today. I'm hoping that somewhere along the line there will be some indication of that okay. by the developer. Well, Connie, thanks for talking with Thank us. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Well, things are starting to pick up steam here. A lot of the balloons are getting blown up. The Neighborhood Services Department has an active booth here. And we're also with somebody else from Neighborhood Services. This is Harry Gearwall. Harry, the department had a lot to do with uh, today's event and really getting things going. Huh? Well, the department has really been working at trying to do some uh, revitalization and redevelopment up in the Sun Slope area for quite a long time. And at one time, actually we owned 25 of the parcels of the 69 that were here. And we had put together a disposition development agreement uh, about three years ago with the local community development corporation, which is Sunny Slope Revitalization, Inc. They identified ANC Properties, who was looking at doing a development project in the area. So they started to have some discussions and uh, they asked us to come in and help them with those discussions. So the, the, the city's really a rainmaker in a situation like this. Not only did we own some of the property on the site, but also got involved, as I understand it, in condemnations and helping assemble the entire package? Well, there were some of uh, the properties that we were unable, to, actually the developer was unable to acquire. And um, they came and asked if we could help them with that. And when we were looking at the, the public benefit, we certainly agreed that that was something that needed to be done. So we went in and we helped to negotiate and actually work through the process of acquiring the properties. And many of the property owners who were reluctant uh, were able to get a fair market value for their, their land. They've gotten a lot of assistance from the city and relocation and even helping them to get their businesses started up at their new locations. Wow. So I have the feeling that without the neighborhood groups, this wouldn't have happened. But at the, by the same token, without the city's involvement, this wouldn't have happened, too. Well, it was a joint partnership. It really was. It was a very collaborative effort. 
that occurred, mm -hmm. and it took all three parties. It took the local neighborhood community, it took the city of Phoenix, and obviously the private developer to come in right. and make this happen. Right. But the, the message to neighborhood groups say is, is that you get involved, get committed, and, and if you'll commit, then you know, you'll find help from the city and probably from private interests too. Absolutely, and that's what we're looking for, those good, comprehensive, collaborative partnerships throughout the city. Well, Harry, congratulations, and hope you enjoy the festivities today. Thank you very you much. You guys deserve to have a good time on this. <laughs> Thank you. Things are really starting to happen now. Yeah! Okay, let, let's do names real quick. Who are you? I'm Blanca. Blanca? I'm Sally. Hi. Bianca Castro. Hi, Bianca. Jasmine. Jasmine, nice to meet you. Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Anna. And Anna. Now tell me, what are you what are you girls going to be doing today? Dancing. Oh, what kind of dance do you do? Spanish. Spanish, Mexican dancing. Okay, do you practice a lot? Yeah. How often do you practice? Um, maybe every day, twice a week. Once a week. Twice a week. Oh, twice a week. Yeah. Okay, well we're looking forward to this. We're going to be we're going to be taping your performance, so you make sure you do a real good job and smile okay. for us, okay? Okay. All right, kids, good luck. One of the people we've been looking to find is Joe Atkinson. Joe is with the uh, Sunny Slope Village Alliance. Hi, Joe. Glad we were able to track you down. It's a big day for the Alliance. Big day for the whole neighborhood. Alliance is uh, sure glad to be part of it, but it's something we've been looking forward to. Well, the Alliance is 10 years old this year, and it was one of the big keys that everybody said they wanted early on was a shopping center within walking distance of the homes that you just passed. So. It's here. Well, you know, it's probably easy to say at a group meeting or a community meeting, this is what we want. What do you think some of the keys were to making it actually happen for this area? Involvement of all the big players in the neighborhood and finding a developer who could actually follow through with what they proposed. And then they worked real hard making the package come together and they went back to you know, the city, and the city is a key element. Uh, and they worked with them, and everybody just kept, every time there was a hurdle, they'd get through it and go on and wait for the next one to pop up. No persistence. Amen. Never give up. Uh, what would you like people around the city, it's such a big city now, and new people are moving in all the time, to know or to think about uh, Sunny Slope? It's a great place to live, work, and play. Uh, you know, I went down to a traffic or the uh, urban study for what we need in buses and stuff, and I, I just sort of had a laugh. I said, I live, work, and play here. I'm in within a mile of everything I ever want to do. And I say, I have to get a special pass to get out of Sunny Slope anymore because <laughs> I don't want to leave. And it's a diamond in the rough. Everybody, uh, you know, they'll still come up here and see places that need work, but if they're smart, they buy in, and they put the work into it because it's definitely here to stay. Joe, congratulations, and thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good time today. I will. All right. You see, the outer guard is uh, just pulling up. You can see them all over there by the stop sign there. As you can see, we're at First Street in Townley, where in just a few moments, the festivities are getting underway for the groundbreaking for the first retail center this area has seen in a long, long time. Okay, things are starting to happen on the stage. The dancers are dancing, and look who we found. It's Council 8, District 8 Council Member Cody Williams. Cody, good afternoon. It's a, it's a big day for the folks of Sunny Slope, isn't it? Absolutely. It's a wonderful day, not only for the people who live in Sunny Slope and who have waited for years for this to happen, but it marks the beginning of a new way to look at community and economic development. I have high hopes 
Well, how, how do you mean that? What do you mean by that? Well, le there are a number of sites like this in older established communities throughout the city of Phoenix. And it is my hope that uh, whether it's ABCO, whether it's this particular developer or not, that the city can assist in developing in areas where retail has been void, where we have waited for things to happen in our central city and in our south and west parts of this city. We need more of these. And, and so to see this getting off the ground, to, to see the celebration and the young people dancing, and then to talk to some of the board members of, of this community who have lived here 40, 50, 60 years, and who have said this is long overdue. It says to me that there are thousands of, communi uh, of community members who would love to see this very thing happen in their community, and that's why I'm here. You make a great point about partnership, too, because the neighborhood certainly was committed to it, and that helps, it makes it easier for the city to get involved, doesn't it? Especially on a council end, when you, when you know you've got that commitment from the neighborhoods that you like to do here. Ab absolutely, and a lot of emphasis is often placed on our newest neighborhoods, but in reality, it's the neighborhoods that have been here and the people who have paid the taxes and who have provided for the infrastructure. And when we see wasted property, where nothing is happening and we need to have a reinjection. Uh, these folk have already paid their dues. And that's why when they come out and say, hey, look, this is something we want, that we care about, it matters a great deal to me that we focus on the needs of the central city, the established communities, and, and find a way to successfully replicate what we are doing here today in several other areas throughout the city. Excellent points. Thanks a lot, Cody. Thank you. All right. Have a good time today. It's a All real right. celebration. It's a great time. It's a lot of fun. Yes, indeed. Okay. Thank you. We continue here at Central near Townley as the uh, the big groundbreaking is just about an hour or so away now. We're joined by Bob Coons, and Bob's been a real key player in this. He is the is the chairman or president, or how would you describe yourself, Bob? Uh, president of the board of directors of SVR. Okay, SVR being the Sunny Slope Village Revitalization Incorporated. Right. Now, you guys have a, have a lot of activities around here in the neighborhood. I understand, for example, you're involved in uh, building housing units. Yeah, SVR's uh, you know, mission is to revitalize the Sunny Slope area. And, and in that mission, we have uh, three or four strategic goals. One of them is to uh, provide safe, affordable housing. And we've uh, built still about six, eight houses today, to date, and about four more getting ready to start. Well, that's fabulous. Now, when you say you've built them, who is able to occupy them? Uh, low, moderate income families. Uh, we uh, partner with the City of Phoenix Housing Department. Uh, LISC, the Local Initiative Support Corporation, uh, to provide funding. Uh, we're facilitators. We uh, buy the land through grants. Uh, we provide the available space. And then through LISC and the City of Phoenix, uh, we're able to build the homes uh, to qualified buyers. That's fabulous. Now, you must have been deeply involved in what's happening here today. Yeah, SVR started about three years ago uh, in listening to the community at a uh, community forums. Uh, we asked them what it was that they wanted in this area, what they needed. Uh, the single most thing that was mentioned was uh, neighborhood commercial, particularly a grocery store. And then really the city of Phoenix came in at that point in time and uh, finished it all up for us with ANC. So we were kind of the facilitators and the spark to make it Right, out. you're the real neighborhood level people that, uh, have, that carry the commitment. When you go and deal with people in government, people in the private sector, then you're able to say, yeah, you know, we're the grassroots organization that can prove to you this is something we really want in our community. Right, you know, it takes a lot of people. We uh, act as facilitators with partnerships with a lot of people, a lot of groups, uh, and the, the community to uh, deliver, determine really what they want, what they need for the revitalization of the area, and then what 
use what powers and uh, capabilities that we have to go out and make it happen. And you're all volunteers too, right? Yes, there's an 11 member board and they're all volunteers. All right, well, congratulations. We've got a lot to be proud of. It's a big day. Oh, it is. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're really excited. Great. It's 5 o'clock, the sun is getting kind of low, we just have the national anthem. And this is Dan Coleman. Dan is President and CEO of John C. Lincoln Health Networks. And Dan, of course, the hospital is right behind you here. Yes. What kind of impact do you think uh, your organization has had on, on uh, what's happening here today? You guys are very involved in the community, aren't you? We've been a part of this community uh, going back to 1927, and uh, this is a culmination of efforts of lots of people, certainly including Lincoln, but uh, City of Phoenix and the St. Slope Village Revitalization Corporation and lots of the neighbors and businesses in this area uh, to make a difference, to bring a grocery store back to Sunny Slope and uh, to have a place that uh, people here can shop and get the things that they need. A lot of our uh, uh, employees live in this neighborhood and this makes it even better for that. Uh, and we've been involved with a lot of the neighborhoods to make this a safer place to live and better place so that the families can live here and grow and work right here in the neighborhood. Well, congratulations. It's a big day for you and JC. Well, thank you very much. We're, we're pleased. This is going to be a phenomenal project that is already spurring redevelopment requests from throughout the city to see what's available in this area. I said that I wasn't going to recognize because you start and, and you keep going. But let me tell with my friends and my neighbors that you came to me when you said, let's make this thing happen, we'll stick together, we'll work together. And it was difficult pulling the community together because of the past. But I got to tell you, as difficult and maybe as many mistakes as we made, as I made in the past, in terms of this project not coming to today, until today, it was because of the commitment. This is so important for me to get out. It, because of our city system. It was because of the commitment of the management team and the neighborhood services development team that made this happen. Frank Fairbanks, your city manager. Jacques Avant, the deputy city manager. Kim Rodriguez, Dorney Rodriguez, the project manager on this. And so many others that I've left out. They really do really, really deserve our sincere thanks from this community because they believed in us that we would come through for them and they partnered and, and Frank and Kim and Jacques and Rick and whoever else is, is here or isn't here from the bottom of our hearts, I don't know how we can express our thanks because I know it doesn't happen because of any political side, it happens because you wanted it to happen, so thanks a lot. It's uh, City Council Member Phil Gordon, the man of the hour. Phil, a big day for Sunny Slope. Oh, just a phenomenal day. Yeah. Congratulations, it went really well. Well, it's been a great, great celebration, but you know, it wouldn't have happened without the community coming together, helping us without the mayor, without Peggy Bilstein, without Councilman Williams, Councilman Lingner, Nelson, Siebert, uh, who am I That's leaving everybody. out? No, don't forget <laughs> Councilman Milton, he helped me too. <laughs> Um, it's just been a great, great day in the, the community, and this has been 17 years in the making. One of the themes we keep hearing today is, is that it involved everybody, and, it invo and the city played a great role in it in helping get the parcel together and helping with other proceedings that made it possible for the developer to stay involved, and none of that could have happened, of course, without neighborhood commitment. So I guess it's a lesson in, in persistence and perseverance and community involvement. It really is. Uh, while a long one, the community stayed together. It was unified. I mean, this large of area stayed together and said, we'll work to make this happen. The developer said he would stick at the table to make it happen. And then the council and, and the management team that make this happen and assemble it. But the important thing we learned today, too, is that this was not done from a nonprofit standpoint. This was done because the developer knew and wanted to make a profit that this community would support it. So it's actually served as the beacon that urban core redevelopment is a reality, it's desirable, it can make a profit, and most importantly, it serves a community that needs it. Well, you know, it's an excellent point that this is, there's a profit motive here, but what's different now than, say, five, ten years ago? Well, I think the commitment to make it happen, the, there's so many barriers in terms of infill, 
commercial development. You have land assemblies, you have time, you have rezoning, you have environmental problems. You, just so many issues that if you line them up all at the beginning and say, like a normal new development project, you wouldn't go forward with it. It's just, it, yeah, it's just it's too overwhelming. Much. It will crush the system. What we did was take a different tack. We said, do we have a commitment that we want it to happen? And we'll start to solve the issues as they come up and not try to solve them in advance. And that it will be a process that will take time, but we did. And that commitment everyone held to. And the end result was a project that happened. This is the first infill project like this of its type. Commercial, of a large assemblage, and a, and a new, brand new uh, grocery store coming in. It, it, it's a tribute to the process, to everybody. Well, Spotlight is on S Mountain and on Sunny Slope today. Well, look at this. There it is. You know, this is what everyone's been talking about. Million dollar views in a million dollar location. Yeah. We are in the heart of the city. This is an unbelievable area. People couldn't visualize this until this property was clean. And now we're getting calls from housing developers, from uh, businesses. We have an architect that's planning to build an office just down the street on Central. It's already starting and we haven't even, we just broke ground. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Phoenix is, is getting bigger all the time and there are a lot of people moving in all the time who might not be aware or familiar with Sunny Slope and what Sunny Slope means to the community and the history of Sunny Slope in the community. What would you like people citywide to know about this area? Well, first of all, this area is no different than any other area in town. It's a neighborhood community made up of local residents that have been here years, new residents that have come in, young kids, elderly people, businesses like John C. Lincoln Hospital to the mom and pop little restaurant. Um, but it was an area like many of our areas in the city that was at stress, had stress and was at risk. And what I want everybody to know is it's the same as your neighborhood. Um, no neighborhood is immune from the growth and the slum and the blight. On the other hand, no area should have any differential treatment in terms of services or, or mm -hmm. any investment on the part of the city. We proved today that it's going to happen on the positive. Historically, this is where people came to cure themselves for a new rebirth. Came to Sunny Slope. To, in the old days, uh, the people from back east came here because of tuberculosis. And I think it's sort of ironic that today, when people had written off lots of parts of our city and, and this area, today it's beginning the new healing process and again, not subsidized by the government, and that's why it's opening, but because we help make it happen, businesses will come to make a profit, and this community will start to prosper again. And if you look around, you see it already. Very nicely said. Thank you very much. Thanks and congratulations. It's been Thanks a great day. Well, it's about 5.30. Things are starting to break up. It's hard to believe that within a year or so, you're going to see a huge retail development center right here on this dirt lot. So as you're driving up Central Avenue, just north of Northern, give a look to your right. Have a look at this spot. And over the next year, you'll see rising here a retail development center, one of the first really big, exciting things that's happened in this neighborhood in a long, long time. I'm Ken Lynch for City Scene.